Hello friends, let us study now second part of the membrane technology lecture and as I told you earlier that in this portion basically we will take up about the what are the different types of modules and what are the different applications of membrane process in the food industry. So, as far as the membrane modules are concerned, there are major membrane like flat sheets, they are a flat sheet geometry or tubular membranes. The membranes of flat sheet geometry are plate and frame module or a spiral bound module. The tubular module may be the hollow fiber. The spiral bound modules are of compact layout and the basic unit of the membrane that you can see here that is these are the membranes. The basic unit is sandwich of a flat membrane sheet which is called a leaf and this leaf is wound around a central perforated tube that is here this cross section cut section is here. So, it is a wound around in this perforated tube. One leaf consists of two membrane sheets that is the one and two, two membrane sheets they are placed back to back and are separated by a spacer that is the spacer which is called permeate carrier. Layers of the leaf are glued along three edges while the unglued edge is sealed around the perforated central tube. Feed water enters the spacer channel you can see here it is entering the spacer channel at the end of the spiral bound element in a path parallel to the central tube. It is flowing towards this side right? and then the filtered water in the permeate carrier travels spirally inward towards the central collector tube okay? while water in the feed spacer that does not permeate through the membrane continues to flow across the membrane surface. And you can see here there is the concentrate as well as permeate they are coming from the other end they are going out from this end the feed solution and how this separation is taking place you can see through here those this is the permeate flow. Okay. So, the concentrate stream exit the element parallel to the central tube through the opposite end from which the feed water entered relatively large membrane area is can be provided here per element and it is considered to be a good cost effective solution for high volume applications. Primary advantage of this type of module is of low capital investment and energy saving. It is available for all types of filtration processes starting from even microfiltration to reverse osmosis they can all this type of membrane can be applied. The other plate and frame module the it was the earliest module design and the based when on the simple filters and consisted of flat sheets of membrane confined in a filter press called plate and frame module. You can see here in the picture that is these are the frame provided for keeping this membrane this uh, your these are the support for this membrane and these lines these are the membranes. So, the feed is entering through this which passes through the membrane and it this uh, permeate goes through that line and this retentate take this. 
So, this is a simple design simple configuration. Similarly, here also the feet comes these are the two membranes and this. So, this is a thin seat held in the layer, layer different modules. Due to its simplicity, these plate and frame modules have been widely used in live scale as well as in industrial applications. Here surface to volume ratio is typically 350 to 500 for these modules. Tubular module, this have a tube like structure with uh, porous walls. You can see in these figures, they work through tangential class flow and they are highly resistant to plugging. These tubular membranes, these are the membranes you can see, they are typically used when the feed stream contains large amount of suspended solids or fibrous compounds. The tubular module consists of a minimum of two tubes. There is the inner tube which you can see here there is there is a inner tube inside which is called the membrane tube and other is the outer tube which is called the cell. You can see here in this picture this is the cell and there are different inner tubes. The feed stream grows across the length of the membrane tube, it is entering here in the membrane tube and then gets separated. Uh, so, the it is the filtered out into the outer cell while concentrate collects at the opposite end of the membrane. It is the retentant is going from the filter and concentrate comes here in this. So, this is the type of you can see in these figures. The other very Common or you can say that is another important type of module uh, that is used more frequently nowadays. It is the hollow fiber module. In this hollow fiber modules, you can see here in the picture that uh, fibers, several fibers, they are bundled together longitudinally. They are plotted in a resin on both ends and encased in a pressure vessel. There is the fibers bundled together longitudinally parted in a resin on both ends and encased in a pressure vessel. They are extremely high packing density, high open channel design, they provide high contact surface to volume ratio may be 7000 to 13000 meter square per cubic meter. They offer the possibility of back washing from the permeate side particularly suited for low solid liquid stream. These modules are suited for the low solid liquid streams. Now, in the lecture one we came across these two points that is the fouling and concentration polarization. Let us see the phenomena how this fouling takes place how the concentration polarization takes place what are these. So, this fouling is basically a phenomena where solute or particles either get deposited you can see here they get deposited on the membrane surface and to the membrane surface which is called concentration polarization or they are held into the membrane pores. So, they block the pore right and of course, both the concentration polarization as well as pore blocking they degrade the membrane's performance in terms of productivity and quality. Major types of fouls may be the bacterial growth it is sometimes suppose if the cleaning of the membrane is not proper and some bacterial cell remains adhering. So, after some time it will grow, it will multiply and it may grow in size and it may shock the membrane, it may block the membrane. Okay. Even organic materials, biological materials, colloidal particles or suspended matters all these may cause this problem of fouling and concentration polarization. 
major factors that influence the rate of fouling are membrane properties, feed solution composition and operating conditions that is particularly the pressure, the temperature etcetera. Additionally, even the process duration and the mode of filtration that is as you have seen in the lecture first part of this lecture that is the dead end or cross flow dead end causes more blocking or more concentration polarizer than that of the cars flow. So, these also affect the rate of local increase of solid over the membrane surface and therefore, problem of fouling. Consequences of the fouling of course, that is uh, during filtration process the long term loss of membrane process throughput or performance capacity is down that is the performance is of the membrane is less the flux you will get it will be less because of this concentration polarization or poor blocking. And even if that long for the long term particularly even in the dead end flow depending upon the pressure etcetera in the long run this concentration solutes which get deposited across the surface they may get even uh, the gel layer for, from the boundary layer formed the boundary layer or gel layer it may also act as a secondary membrane and it may cause the rejection of the small solutes also reducing the native design selectivity of the membrane. That is even the membrane which should allow the passage of this because of the concentration polarization because of the fouling it may reject those solutes. You can see here in this figure that is in the boundary layer this is the membrane right this bulk solution the, so C B is the concentration of the bulk solution the material is flowing this is the permeate. So, in the boundary layer of course, slowly and slowly the when the you are applied pressure from this side all right the flow is a. So, slowly and slowly that is a boundary layer that is the solute here the concentration of the solute in the boundary layer will be obviously more than that of the concentration of the solute in the bulk solution and then further in the long even the further long time it is then, then these solutes they may get even they may become compacted they may compact and they may form a concentrated gel layer. So, you can see here this is the C G is the concentration of the gel layer. So, here the concentration of solute is much more than that of the solutes concentration in the boundary layer or in the bulk solution. So, obviously, when it is the concentrated layer here the flux will be reduced. The same thing is shown here in this diagram that is the concentrated solution boundary layer gel layer and then. So, methods to reduce fouling because it is a very very in order to get proper filtration for process efficiency we should take care that fouling and concentration polarization phenomena is as low as possible. So, the pre treatment of the feed solution is one important way that is the if possible that is the suspended particles etcetera they may be sometime even some the cell feed can be given pre treatment or pre filtered etcetera in the normal filtration process etcetera or periodic pulsing of the filtrate like back washing. Periodic membrane cleaning with acid alkali treatment etcetera that is membrane should be properly cleaned and increasing shear by rotating or vibrating the membrane. So, these are the ways by which one can reduce the fouling problem in a membrane process. So, we come towards the end part of the lecture that is application of membrane technology in food processing. There are this process in fact there are wide ranging it has a great potential for application in food processing industry wide ranging applications include that is the 
in the preparation of fruit and vegetable juice concentrates for concentration of fruit juices, vegetable juices, etc. Filtration of cane sugar and other fruit juices, particularly in the cane sugar, sugar that is the characteristic uh, flavor of the sugar juice, cane sugar juice. If it is given heat treatment, etc., it lasts. So, that is membrane technology can be applied to remove the uh, to clarify the cane sugar as well as to remove bacteria and enzymes etc. from it and therefore, it is a self life can be extended without any involvement of heat in the process. Also, this membrane technology can be used for preparation of low caffeine coffee extracts for production of low or zero alcohol beer, concentration of egg white. It is also used in oil milling industries for removal of free fatty acids from the oil or for removal of phospholipids etcetera for the fractionation of macromolecules it is incorporated into formation of immobilized enzymes in bioreactors are used for water purification, filtration and waste water treatment. In fact, that is the one of the very very common use of this membrane technology that reverse osmosis is RO water that is in the water filtration or water purification it is very common. So, we will see some of the application a specific industry wise application that is in dairy or milk processing industries all these process RO, NAF, UF, RMF can be used. RO can be used for pre concentration of milk and whey prior to their concentration. There is some of the suspended salt are alkaloidly dissolved salt solids etcetera they can be removed from this and then there is the it can be passed through the concentrator in the normal maybe. So, by this one can increase that uh, uh, quality of this milk because in the membrane process that is there is no involvement of the temperature etcetera. Also, the nano filtration can be used for partial demineralization and concentration of the whey which is obtained after the making cheese that is the whey it contains very uh, that is the minerals etcetera. So, they can be also using nano filtration technology they can be demineralized or the whey can be concentrated. Even ultra filtration technology can be used in milk or dairy industry for fractionation of milk for cheese manufacture, for fractionation of whey, for whey protein concentrate preparations and so on. Microfiltration can be used for clarification of cheese whey, defatting and reducing microbial load of milk and so on. That is the even the fat particles or microorganisms of the milk can be removed. So, it can be used as a uh, low temperature or non thermal pasteurization or even sometime that is if you have that type of membrane even the non thermal sterilization of the milk the process can be standardized. So, it has the great potential for application in dairy industry. Similarly, in other food and beverage industry for the vegetable products processing industries it can be used for clarification and concentration of fruit and vegetable juices because that is the these fruits and vegetable juices they contain many bioactive compounds which are sensitive to heat those heal. so in this concentration heat thermal processes are used for concentration or evaporation for such materials so health components or bio components they may get destroyed their health benefits are lost so here the membrane technology has a very very great potential for preparation of healthy fruits and vegetable juice or for retention of health components in the sub material. It can be used for clarification, decolorization and concentration of beet and cane sugar juice as I already told you earlier. In the case of grain processing industries for the production of soya isolate, wheat proteins etcetera, it has a great potential in the preparation of plant 
extracts like concentration of coffee there is the decaffeination of coffee preparation concentration of tea and preparation of other herbal extracts clarification and concentration of corn syrup like glucose and fructose etc recovery of iron exchange regeneration effluent so even in the vegetable processing industries grain processing industries in the plant extract preparations this has a very good use this process in the preparation of that is in the beverage industries like in the case of there is the alcohol alcoholic drink manufacturing industries it can be used for dealcoholization of beer and wine even the beer recovery from tank of bot tank bottom bottom of the tank to clear the malt beverage for clarification of the malt extract wort etc you can see here like uh, from the beer vessel there is the be this can be passed through the membrane and this membrane will allow the passage of only alcohol and water right and the it can be further recirculated so you get the, of course it is a ro unit so dealcoholized beer or dealcoholized wine can be obtained and then the water and alcohol they can be further the alcohol can be separated from the water similarly in the organic solvent recovery it has a great potential for animal products it can be used for concentration and deacing of blood plasma it can be used for concentration and deacing of pork beef fish gelatin concentration of egg white or even clarification and fractionation of protein hydrolysates all these are possible using membrane technology in the fish and seafood products concentration of fish proteins can be there is the extraction of proteins and their concentration using membrane technology can be possible in the bio food preparation like in for processes like separation isolation purification concentration of products from fermentation like for that is the from the fermentation medium even the separation of organic acids amino acids all is possible using appropriate type of membranes using appropriate type of separation process and using proper processing conditions like in the water reclamation the pulsing of evaporator condensate and ro permeate can be used for the process effluent like brine clarification for reuse recovery of cip solution etc even in the enzyme processing industry recovery and concentration of enzymes or pigment and uh, dyes concentration and deacing of dyes all this can be used then using these processes here in the picture you can say that pre concentration that is the feed juice is shown a tomato juice of 5 degree brix it is passed through a micro filtration membrane so the micro filtration retentate that is the suspended solids are coming and this is passed through another ro membrane that is this they are the passed through the micro filtration that is the clarified juice is passed through ro membrane so this micro filtration filter retentant and ro retentant they are combined together so you have the they have the combined retentant that is the pre concentrated juice then the permeate after that is first from mf it goes to ro then ro permeate then can go to again that is ro polisher and from ro polisher it gives ro permeate that is pure water recycle it can be used for recycle for use whereas this uh, ro retentant that is the water is disposed and this uh, recombined retentant that is the pre concentrated juice is can be sent to the evaporator under vacuum evaporator etc the condensate is sent for ro filter and the concentrated juice 
like this process that is the tomato juice from 5 degree bricks to 70 degree bricks that is the combination of these two process it becomes possible otherwise in the normal even this uh, this uh, juice viscosity of the juice becomes a very very important factors and in the normal heat process or evaporation or even in vacuum only in vacuum evaporation also it is difficult to get such high concentrated juice. The protein and enzyme concentration this figure shows that is from the fermenters that is generally that is these from the fermenter medium they are passed through centrifugation and pre coat filters right and then they are sent to the ultra filtration where you get the finishing and formulation. So, these two centrifugation and pre coat filtration processes can be avoided by having one simple micro filtration that is the fermenter output can be passed through micro filtration and then ultra filtration and you can get the desired types of particles. Similarly, in the in the milk or whey in the dairy evaporator raw cond condensate storage like concentrate disposal there is RO plant can be used here polish to condensate a recovery water for you. So, it has a large scale wide ranging application in this. So, friends by now we have, you have seen that how that is membrane technology has a vast potential for application in food processing industry. It being a non thermal process it is a novel technology particularly for the preparation of health foods for the preparation of various or concentration process either for the, the extension of self life of the material because the, the causative agents or deteriorative agents like microorganisms, enzymes etcetera they can be separated. So, the self life of the materials can be increased or it can be used for that uh, adding value that is in improving that is the these components which are separated they can be further used in feed ingredients or in different process operations for preparing value added products. With this I thank you for your kind attention.